Hello everybody, I'm Ajit K. Mishra. I'm back again with a session on an important communication skill, speaking. There are two uh, most important skills that are required for workplace success, listening and speaking. So, because these are the two skills that are used, that are required in the workplace on a regular basis. And those people who are good at these skills have a greater chance of making it to the top level. Because they are comfortable while listening to others and they are also comfortable while speaking to others. So listening and speaking are complementary to each other and that's the reason why Listening is an important activity, so also is speaking. So I'm going to walk you through the world of speaking and of the various aspects associated with speaking, the challenges, the strategies, and various other things that we need to do when it comes to speaking so that we can do the right kind of speaking and succeed. So to give you an idea of for the challenges that are associated with speaking, I will start with poor speaking and the price that we all pay for poor speaking. So we all know when we do not speak properly, we fail to communicate our messages clearly. And when that happens, that leads to disasters, so professional disasters. So it's very, very important that we take care of our speaking strategies, our speaking approaches. I can give you a list of uh, the uh, things that are associated with poor speaking and then how um, we actually have to pay the price for that. The first aspect of poor speaking is lack of focus. So, when communication, especially speaking, is not prioritized, everything that we communicate becomes inefficient and ineffective. Because very little gets accomplished when we cannot communicate, we cannot speak our thoughts, our plans, our ideas clearly. So very little gets accomplished. So it's very important that we learn how to speak effectively so that the, the message is delivered properly and the outcome is ensured through the proper delivery of the message. There is another aspect of poor speaking, that is the failure of purpose. When we are unable to communicate well on a day-to-day -day basis, it is generally symptomatic of a larger communication disturbance or disaster. So just imagine if, if, if people cannot communicate their vision and purpose, they have effectively lost them. So in order to uh, communicate my vision and my purpose, I have to be very, very effective while communicating. So we, we have to retain the focus. We have to maintain the purpose through our communication. So poor speaking can also mean that there is, there is lack of innovation because there are certain challenges that suddenly crop up. When those challenges crop up and people are not speaking to each other and people are not speaking properly to each other, they will not be able to innovate, they will not be able to find alternative ways through which they can address that problem. So I am reminded of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic when it suddenly and abruptly erupted, emerged, people began to discuss, the researchers came forward, came together, they collaborated, they discussed things among themselves and see how quickly the, the, the scientific community uh, was able to come up with vaccines, some, some medications 
and various other things as a response to this disaster. So that was a classic example of innovation in quick time. It could happen because there was a dialogue. People were speaking regularly with each other. So when there is poor speaking, it will not lead to any innovation. Besides, it will also lead to a drop in morale. Because people who work and make things successful, if they are not happy, if they do not belong, if they are not satisfied, it will mean that they will be less productive gradually. And that will lead to a drop in morale. Further, poor speaking can also lead to loss of credibility. Just imagine, if I speak about things that do not have any meaning, that do not have any reason, that do not have any substance, are you going to trust me? Same is the case with you. If you speak things that have no credibility, that have no you know, uh, importance, substance, meaning, purpose, people are not going to trust you. So poor speaking actually results in the loss of credibility. So when people uh, speak in a very poor manner, such people do not have any credibility. So we can think of a of, of few poor speaking styles so that we take care of each one of them and then we can think of overcoming these poor speaking styles and at the same time we can also think of whether we are committing any of these or, or all of these poor speaking uh, issues, poor speaking uh, styles we are following. If it is a case, we can think of overcoming, we can think of dropping these poor speaking styles and adopt better speaking styles. The first one is musitation. Musitation is a problem when people just open their lips to say something but actually don't say anything. They speak in such a, you know, muttered and mumbled manner that most of the things they say becomes inaudible. So when you are inaudible, when you begin to mutter, mumble, and you, you come out with a muffled voice, people will not be able to listen to you. So when that happens, it will lead to problems because people will fail to understand you and you as a speaker will fail to convince people that you are saying something. You will fail to communicate your ideas to people. The second uh, poor speaking style is the discursive style. The discursive style is all about uh, uh, rambling uh, and uh, it's, it's all about people who can never stay on point in any conversation. That means they will be uh, fluctuating, they will be switching from one point to the other and they'll never stay in point. So that means you are discursive and the topics that you are bringing up. So when people are discursive and the topics uh, they bring up are just thrown around as quickly as a hot potato because they, they will not be able to stay on point and they will jump from one idea, one topic to the other topic. There is another poor speaking style which is uh, known as the ponderous or the boring uh, speaking style. Whether uh, we lack enthusiasm or the story is uh, downrightly dull. So, especially those people who are chatting uh, with us might need a cup of coffee to pay attention because we are speaking in such a, a ponderous and dull and boring manner that people will need some kind of support to maintain their attention on us. So we need to avoid such style while speaking because we have to 
uh, sound interesting while speaking, otherwise uh, people will lose interest in us. There is another uh, type of speaking uh, style that is called the flowery style. And as the name suggests, it is all about you know, decorating our speech with so many uh, outlandish, strange and heavily loaded expressions that uh, people lose interest in them. So, so, this type of style is called over the top speaking and it can be very, very exhausting. So, most often, um, you know, in order to um, make their speech interesting, people generally add um, sentences that, that appear to be absolutely uh, smart and overcomplicated and that does not help because people lose interest. So, flowery speaking style is one such style that people need to avoid, especially when it comes to the workplace. There is another uh, poor speaking style that is called prolix style, in which long drawn out speeches uh, generally uh, make everyone zone out. Because if we use prolix style, we are actually guilty of wordy sentences. And just for the sake of uh, you know expanding our speech, the word count, we use lots of words that are not necessarily needed. So, we, we become extremely prolix, verbose, wordy in our expressions. For example, uh, instead of saying at, at uh, this point in time, I can always say now. So, if I say at this point in time, I am sounding very, very prolix. So, why should I use such a longer expression when we have a condensed and a far better expression to substitute it. So, similarly, people who adopt prolix style sound very, very uh, boring and out of the place. Another poor speaking style is the sesquipedalian style. I mean, as the name suggests, it's actually out of the world thing. So, but uh, the issue is the bigger does not always mean better especially when it comes to words. So, there are some people who have a tendency to be a sesquipedalian. That means, they are about you know throwing in long words, unnecessarily long words with an abundance of different syllables. So, into, into everyday sentences and such a speaking style creates a lot of problem uh, for the listeners because they most of them cannot even follow what has been said. I can give you an example of uh, uh, sesquipedalian style when people say anti disestablishmentarianism. So that's a sesquipedalian uh, term. It doesn't mean anything. So just to show off how much uh, uh, people know, it is not a good idea to use this style because it is a very poor speaking style. Similarly, there is another style that is a loquacious style. A loquacious style is when a speaker is overly chatty. A loquacious person is one who just babbles about anything and everything, making them a hard person to say goodbye no matter how hard you try. Because there are people who will not leave you. They will go on talking about one thing or the other and they will not let you go. So, that is also a very poor speaking style. So, that way we come to an end of this session. I am sure you have taken note of all these speaking styles and you have started thinking about your speaking styles and you are going to explore the best speaking styles that we all need to adopt in order to be good communicators, be effective communicators and ensure success in life. So, thank you for joining me. I will meet you again. Bye-bye. Okay.